on the road to Mac Stock with Jay Miller. This is Mac Voices. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices After Dark. Uncensored, off-topic, and always off the wall. Mac Voices After Dark is available as a benefit to our Patreon subscribers. Sign up at patreon.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is the end of the road to Mac stock because we now have only a very few days left. And if you haven't gotten your tickets for Mac stock conference and expo in Woodstock, Illinois, you should be visiting MacStockConferenceAndExpo.com right now to get them so you can join us and have a whole lot of fun with people like our guest today, Jay Miller, who is one of the speakers at Mac stock. Jay, it's great to have you back. Always happy to have a conversation with you, Chuck. I always enjoy it too, Jay. We seldom see eye to eye on things, but I enjoy the debates. But one thing I think we can see eye to eye on is Mac stock. You know, I'm not sure. This is my my first in person Mac stock. Uh, I did the virtual one a couple of years ago and had a blast there. So uh, we'll see how well I'm received. I know uh, historically, not just uh, because I work for Microsoft, but also I, I tend to have the most uh, pessimistic of outlooks when it comes to tech companies and their fandoms. So uh, hopefully I don't get run out of Woodstock uh, tarred and feathered. I kind of doubt it, but I'll make sure that all the broth and eggs are removed from the room just in case, just in case. So as I've told everyone who has, uh, has listened to the, uh, this, the series, um, Mike really didn't, Mike Potter really didn't give me much of a hint on who's talking about what. So I'm kind of coming in cold and blind and want to find out what are you going to be talking about? So I think for this one, Chuck, you probably have more knowledge about what I'm talking about than anyone else that'll be at MagStock, except for maybe one of the other speakers, because I'm going to actually be talking about uh, my career, where I'm currently at in DevRel, how I got there, and why I personally believe that People that love going to things like MacStock are great in the industry that I'm a part of, which is developer relations. Okay. Um, I I mean, listen, I think that the crowd that goes to MacStock is pretty great, regardless of what your measurement is. But um, why? And, and, you know, we also do this caveat where we say we don't want you to give your presentation here, but to give a flavor of what people are going to hear. But I, I have to ask, why do you feel like uh, the Mac stock crowd is so perfect for developer relations people? So the biggest one, and this is one slide, I'll only give one slide, uh, it, it's the curiosity level. Uh, you've got people that are willing to spend their money to sit down and listen to people who are just uniquely curious about a platform and a technology stack that they really enjoy. Uh, we both know a uh, good friend, Brett Terpstra, someone who has built many a thing just because, um, or it was a problem that he had, and he had a level of knowledge uh, around the technology that might be higher than most users. And, you know, I don't want to spill all of his beans, but Brett works in DevRel now. Brett's a develop he's a developer advocate over at Oracle. Uh, Christina Warren, someone who's been... Uh, very prolific in the industry, whether we talk about gaming, whether we talk about you know tech news and other things. Senior developer advocate over at GitHub, our, our you know sibling company, and I, I keep seeing this pattern of, of people that have just been very intrigued with technology and say, you know what, I want to try something or I want to go to this. I want to learn a little bit more about this. And when I have those internal meetings. Uh, when they ask like, Hey, we have some headcount. We're hiring for, you know, this role over here. Do you know anybody that is, that is curious about this technology or curious about this, uh, how we're doing this type of thing? Those are the people that we're looking for. And, and of course I'm not coming to, to recruit anybody, but what I've noticed is I go to conferences a lot. And the first thing that I always get asked is, what what do you do? What is your job? It seems like you just go on stage and talk all the time. Like, is, is that part of the job podcast and all that? And the answer is kind of, yeah. But ultimately, it, it really is 
showing that curiosity, showing that conversation and showing that love for community. And, and like I said, anybody that wants to go to Woodstock, Illinois in the middle of the summer and just congregate with a bunch of other people that are just like them. Those are the kind of people that I often recommend for roles. So that, that's kind of my pitch that if, if you're there, this is, this is the job for you. If, if that's kind of your thing. I, I think that that's really interesting, but I'm not sure that what you, everything you just described doesn't apply to just about any job or any industry at the level of, I guess, developer, adv- well, uh, advocacy, let's put it that way. Because I think whether you're enthusiastic about cars or banking or stock trading or whatever, the, the, the people that have the most enthusiasm for it are going to rise to the top. Is, is that a fair assessment? I think that's fair. And if, and if you, you know, talking about cars, if someone had, actually, here's a good example. I, I know of a developer advocate that lives in North Carolina that is the biggest Volkswagen enthusiast. And can tell you about almost every single like major model of Volkswagen vehicle that's been around since probably the 1970s and up. And, you know, it's interesting that we sit down and we have these conversations. And so when you say that, like, are successful people often curious about the role that they're in? Yes. But this person also goes and travels around the world and looks for, you know, rare model Volkswagen vehicles that no one else would bat an eye at. And then he can, you know, he'll sit there, he'll buy it, he'll have it sent to his house. And then he'll sit there and work on it and work on it, work out and he'll document the entire process and he'll have video and photographs and, you know, ask me anything. And even when we go to these developer conferences, he's like, let's have an open space for car enthusiasts. And that that's kind of the difference is there are people who are passionate about it, but then there are people who, like just can go a step beyond. And, you know, we, we hang out in the same circles of podcasting. So there are plenty of people that love talking or arguing about the Mac and, you know, Apple as, as a, not even a company, but as a culture, a culture of people that existed well before I was born and, you know, continues to evolve and adapt over time. And the thing is, these are the people that often are at these kinds of events so I'm not looking for someone who's just like, oh, yeah, I want to learn the, the latest tips and tricks about, you know, my 16 or, you know, the upcoming iPad or, or you know, the new M2. I want people who can sit there and say, like, I'm willing to share my successes, my failures, you know, have my laughing points, embarrass myself a little bit, go out on social media and say, hey, I'm having this problem. And ultimately, when they see other people in the community, they're like, those are my people. Let me connect with them and let me learn more about what they're doing so that I can take that back to what I'm doing and to my community of people that follow me on my journey. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by our Patreon subscribers and Mac Voices After Dark. Ever wonder what happens before the Mac Voices live shows or what happens when the show ends or after the live feed closes? That's where Mac Voices After Dark comes in. If you are a Patreon supporter at any level, you get access to the video of our off-camera conversations. Uncensored, unedited, and always off the wall. It's a small thank you to our Patreon supporters who want to peek behind the curtain. Become a Patreon subscriber at patreon.com slash macvoices. And thanks to everyone who supports the show. What, what is it about us, Jay? What, or what is it about you? And and I'm 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 not even gonna cut myself in here because um but what is it about you and your Volkswagen enthusiast friends and people that you're the kind of people you're talking about that cause us to become so obsessive? Maybe I will just cut myself in, sorry. Um but we, we become obsessive about certain things. And technology I think is one for you and it's one for me. And you know, now we may have narrowed down our particular areas. Um because I'm very much entrenched in the Apple culture. You aren't necessarily, you're, you're sort of on the fringes of that, but you are deep into other aspects of it. What? Why are we this way? I'm pretty sure someone at Apple once made a statement. It's like the developer is at the heart of everything we do. Um, I don't want to give any names because I'm sure it was Tim Cook. I'm sure Steve Jobs said it once or twice. I'm sure somewhere in between. Um, 
you know, Johnny Ive may have used that as an excuse to take away a port or two. But at the, at the end of the day, it was that that's kind of it is it's not just like the technology is fun, but it, it's really the people. Uh, I, I tell people DevRel is, or at least as a developer advocate, it's my job to advocate to the community on behalf of the company, but it's also my job to advocate to the company on behalf of the community. And to me, it's it's that balance. And I think that's what makes us unique is we often build a community around the things that we enjoy. And this community becomes an extended part of our family. Like I know that you could probably name everybody that's, you know, attended your panel on Mac Voices. I'm sure Brett could could name a few people that he's interacted with uh, just being in the you know, the mad genius of the internet. Uh, and I, I've seen this happen to where we start to notice our communities start to intersect. Uh, you've seen this, a fellow friend of ours, Jim Ray, we've met in for, the, for the first time in person at a user group for another community that neither one of us knew that we were a part of. And it just <laughs> happened to be this moment of like, oh, wow, like the people in this community are so amazing. I met somebody in Dublin, Ireland last week that literally goes to the same college down the street from where I attended high school. Like, it, it's that amazing that like, as big as this world is, it is incredibly small. And in that moment, we find ways to connect to one another. And that's important on an individual level. But also, I think a lot of companies are starting to understand that importance as well. Because we, we've all been in that moment where someone wants to make a big technology decision and they go, well, what are you using? What are you, what are you doing? How are you doing that? And, and just because we see what maybe a friend or a fellow community member is doing, that drives our decisions in a way that no amount of paid advertising can provide. I, I, that's a really interesting bottom line, and and I, I I desperately want to go into this more, and we're not going to because you know this is your session, um, but I do th you know I th I think you're absolutely right, and I think that it's something that has been overlooked, and it's surprising how long it's been overlooked. We can probably count on one hand that the number of companies that have developed those enthusiasts and nurtured them, um, Harley Davidson comes to mind, obviously. Um, but Ford with the Corvette and 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 the and the Mustang. Um, I th there was one other I had, and I've I've lost it now. But you know, they a lot of the companies just seem to like, yeah, you know, that's nice, and you guys go and use our product, and we love you. But there's some that have really gone out of their way to embrace the customer and the enthusiast. And I I I, I think you're I think you're onto something. Um, I'm really anxious to hear what you have to say as we go forward with this. And then I'll be sending lots of questions to Brett in the Q&A session. <laughs> I love it. Well, most of my talk, at least the first, I know they've got the split thing. The first talk is mostly a, a, a plea. Like if, if you're interested in developing communities, if you're interested in, you know, speaking to the community in some form of official capacity on behalf of, you know, that the company that, you know, nurtures it or a company that's in the community itself, this might be a good job for you. And then the second talk is going to be more of here, a look at some of the tools that I use in my day to day to, to do what I do. And that includes, you know, working around social media, that includes creating audio and video content. People will finally see how I do podcasting. Um, and then also a look at some of the the little automations that I've built in to help speed up that process a little bit. So uh, I'm hoping that people will enjoy it. And more than anything, I'm hoping that this will give me a definitive place uh, to have a conversation that I get asked again so many times, what is it that you do? I hope this will at least help me understand in more detail exactly what I'm doing, how I do it and how I can encourage other people to get into that industry as well. Jay, to wrap it up, let me ask a question, and that maybe you're equipped to answer or not. Um, but do you see yourself uh, in the in the same kind of category as Guy Kawasaki, and in early the early Apple days? Um, you know, I don't think so. 
I I will say I you know as you mentioned I have a lot of things that people would call passions. Um, one of those is actually another little hint in my slides is attention to mental health and you know, mental health awareness. Uh, it's it's no hidden secret that a lot of the folks that get very very uh, enthralled in these communities are people that often suffer from things like ADHD or, or autism spectrum disorder. Me being someone with both of those diagnoses, I don't really like to think that I'm in the in the thralls of anything other than I'm just really passionate about stuff because in some ways my brain is wired to be hyper passionate about things. Ask me about my Tetris collection. Um, like this is this is a thing that is it's just a part of who I am and. Any time that someone can talk about something and my eyes get really wide and I get a big smile on my face because I just want to share the knowledge that the people around me or what I have, like it's like that's it. Uh, I will say that a lot of advocates go on to create their own very well successful brand. I mean, we've had this conversation, Chuck. I'm quite the sellout and I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I can find that conversation, I'll put it in the show notes, folks, because we're not going to go there, there go. right now. But I, you know, and I, we've laughed about the sellout thing. I don't see you as a sellout. Um, I just see you as, you know, making some different decisions uh, on things, but that doesn't mean they're wrong. It just means they're different. And that's fine. I, th this is going to be, this is going to be a really interesting talk. And I, I absolutely have no concerns that you won't be well received. But it'll be interesting to see because it's a little bit coming in from a little bit different angle than most of the talks. Yeah, I I think before uh, the last time I spoke at Max Talk, there was there was a much of like, hey, here are a lot of automation things you can do, some for fun, some for profit, uh, and I think a lot of focus kind of came on the for profit side. Uh, so this is really just kind of the evolution of, of that talk and and moving it into the like okay, now I've been in the industry for a few years. Now I've seen, you know, what I would deem as, you know, people that I would like to work, you know, alongside in the community and really just being able to, to share some of those insights uh, with people who I enjoy having regular conversations with because one, you know, I don't know the situation for everybody. Someone might be thinking about a career change and honestly, DevRel statistically is one of the most successful accessible uh, industries inside of the tech community. So it's it's one that I, I see I could have a good benefit in helping somebody down the road by just talking about it, because that's something that we don't do enough of unless you're in DevRel. And then often you're talking about DevRel to other people who are already in DevRel, which doesn't, doesn't help them. That doesn't help anybody. It helps <laughs> those people, I guess. It doesn't help anybody new. Um, my goal is to do a lot of those types of things, but do it for people who are not in the industry so that if they're interested, they can have an easier pathway into the industry than what I had. Interesting. Interesting. This is going to be fun. No question about it. Absolutely. So, folks, if you're going to Max Talk, you're definitely going to want to connect with Jay, just if if for nothing else, and just to watch his passion in action, because that's always addictive to me, is just anybody that's passionate about anything is always fun. Um, but if you're not able to go to Max Talk, Jay, what's the best place for people to find out more about you and connect with you outside of that particular conference? So I, I do a lot of stuff for work and for myself, but there's only one place where all that stuff can kind of have, you know light shown on it. And that's on my Twitter account at KJY Miller. Uh, you can also go to kjymiller.com for blog posts and other projects. Uh, I get, I get more and you get more, a little, little more insight into like some of the other things that I'm fascinated about and how I weave that into my DevRel strategy uh, on there. So yeah, I think those are the two best places. Are there pictures of your Tetris collection? I mean, there can be. <laughs> um, it's just a blog post away. Okay, I mean, I've well, only, I've only got nine versions of the game. So, <laughs> well, well, come on, get to it. Let's see the collection. Let's see. The All collection. right. I'll, I'll work on that. <laughs> Jay, thanks so much. I, I will see you in a few days in Woodstock. All right. Looking forward to it. Me too. 
Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. One last time, uh, this is your last chance, the last time I'll tell you, MacStockConferenceAndExpo.com. Get your tickets. Join Jay. Join me. Join all the people we just talked about. We will all be in Woodstock having a great time and being passionate about things. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.